Back in 2003, Dr. John McDougall issued a concerning warning about soy intake, IGF-1 levels and cancer. So first, let's take a listen to that clip and then we'll hear from Dr. Michael Greger as he recently shared how much soy is safe to consume. And as we'll learn, there is an upper limit. Insulin-like growth factor one is a powerful growth hormone made in the body. Not only does insulin-like growth factor one promote the growth of normal tissues like bones, but it promotes the growth of abnormal tissues like cancer. And so in cancer research, insulin-like growth factor one is one of the hottest topics out there. Dairy products cause high IGF-1 levels to occur in people. In a study, it set up an experiment where with one group of people, what they did is they gave them 40 grams of milk protein. And they watched what happened to their insulin-like growth factor 1 levels. And then they took these same subjects and they gave them 40 grams of isolated soy protein. And watched what happened to their insulin-like growth factor 1 levels. And the results are down at the bottom. Milk concentrate increased insulin-like growth factor 1 levels by 36%. But isolated soy protein increased insulin-like growth factor 1 levels by 69% or twice as much. 40 grams of isolated soy protein. How do you get 40 grams of isolated soy protein? Or maybe I should say, is how many of you had 40 grams of isolated soy protein today? Uh, if you eat uh, one chicken soy patty and two soy burgers, you got 40 grams of isolated soy protein in. So you today increased your insulin growth factor 1 levels twice as much as you would if you had consumed dairy. If you ate one soy candy bar and a soy shake, you would take in 40 grams of isolated soy protein. You really need to rethink the soy, soy protein, particularly isolated soy proteins in your diet. So Dr. McDougall appears to be talking about isolated soy protein products like soy burgers, sausages, soy protein powders, etc. Not whole soy foods like edamame, tempeh, and some processed like tofu and soy milk. It is worth noting though that IGF-1 has some positive benefits in that it's a critical mediator of bone growth and fundamental in bone health throughout life. The authors of the study had a positive conclusion when it came to bone health. Quote, in summary, our findings suggest that women who are not on HRT may greatly benefit from consuming soy products. This conclusion is based on our observations that soy supplementation not only reduced bone resorption, but also did not exert a negative effect on calcium, magnesium and phosphorus homeostasis. The stimulatory effects of soy protein on IGF-1 are suggestive of the bone protective effects of soy protein. However, as Dr. McDougall said, the link between IGF-1 levels and cancer risk is well documented. In a recent interview, Dr. Michael Greger shared the safe upper limit for soy intake per day. So let's take a listen. Remember, Dr. Greger only recommends we eat whole food sources of soy. So more than 25 grams of soy protein a day. Typical serving has about five. Yeah, I wouldn't exceed like five servings of soy a day just because we start bumping up our IGF-1 levels over that. So studies have been done. So you don't need anecdotes like internet rumors. You need science. We actually have science. And all the studies that have done that have actually tracked people's testosterone, we're taking, you know, adding more or less soy from the diet so as it doesn't change levels. It's not something to worry about. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below, and subscribe for more upcoming videos.